In this video, we are going to take a look at later British battlecruisers and how they came about. To which, I think it's an appropriate start to immediately bring in Admiral Fisher into our story. When World War I was first starting out, Prince Louis of Battenberg was first Sea Lord of the Admiralty, and due to a myriad of reasons, mostly from anti-German sentiments running rather high, Fisher would replace him. To which he began a large-scale construction program. Through his talents as an administrator, he would circumvent the bureaucratic procedures of the Admiralty and deal with the design department, shipbuilding firms, and material suppliers, and so on directly. The system would be built on trust and mutual support mostly. And within a few months, he had set the construction of a new large fleet including destroyers, submarines, patrol craft, etc. But most important to us, he wanted to build new battlecruisers to strengthen the Grand Fleet against the newest German battlecruisers, of which we've talked about a number on the channel. Fisher brought with him his original idea for the battlecruiser, with areas of concern for the new vessel being speed and the tactical strategic advantages that would come from it. This concept of speed was very important to Fisher. In a quote from British Battlecruisers 1905 to 1920 by John Roberts, in a letter that Fisher had written to Churchill in 1912, he says, quote, There must be sacrifice in armor, there must be further and greater increase in speed. Your speed must vastly exceed that of your possible enemy. End quote. With this, Fisher was advocating that all armored ships should have speeds in excess of 30 knots, but this plea would go unheeded, as the 1913-1914 battleship class, the Royal Sovereigns, would have the standard battle fleet speed of 21 knots. But as for Sea Lord, Fisher would be in a much better position to push his ideas. He would soon set the director of naval construction to work on a 32-knot battlecruiser with 15-inch guns, the never-built Radamanthus, with a rough outline of the battlecruiser as of December 21st, having a displacement of 25,750 tons and a top speed of 32 knots, six 15-inch guns, 24-inch guns, and torpedoes, with possible belt armor as thick as 6 inches. This campaign Fisher would embark on would last until the new year, attempting to get three of these ships built. Another thing that would be important would be Fisher's suggestion to Churchill to suspend the building of the two battleships, Renown and Repulse, ordered from Fairfields and Palmers, respectively. Being suspended on the 26th of August, 1914, due to the fact that they would not be complete in time to take part in the war. Fisher wanted to convert them into battlecruisers. Now, the term convert is a term that should be applied very loosely, as it would be the modification of the design of these battleships, as they did not exist anywhere except on paper, and the materials already gathered in the shipyards for their construction. Churchill would fear these large vessels would take up too many resources, as the materials could go to other ships, and those could be ready before the war would end, believing that the war would not last too long. While Fisher, on the other hand, thought the war would last longer, and that he could repeat his performance with the 1905-1906 construction of the Dreadnought, and get these vessels built very quickly. To save time, he would continue the contracts necessary for the proposed battleships that could be used for the new battlecruisers instead, particularly the eight 15-inch twin gun mountings, which had been ordered in March of 1914. Still, in December of 1914, Fisher's campaign would be bolstered by the victory at the Falkland Islands, writing to Admiral Jellicoe, and again taking this letter from British battlecruisers in 1905-1920 by John Roberts. Fisher writes, I am now here fighting the battle for more battlecruisers. I wish, when you have the leisure, you would write me a casual sort of letter, which I can show the cabinet, not as if you were responding to my request, not an official memorandum, that the supposed existing superiority we have in fast battleships that we now have is fallacious, more especially in quoting the Queen Elizabeth, as they do. None of our existing ships have the necessary future speed. The new German Lutzow battlecruiser, with possibly 14-inch guns, or even 16-inch guns, will certainly have over 28 knot speed. We must have 32 knot speed, to give us the margin for being long out of dock, and to give the necessary speed to catch a 28 knot ship. Speed is everything. It would save me an immense amount of trouble if you would kindly send this letter to Beatty, as being the admiral commanding the battlecruiser squadron, if he could support me with a private letter, written in a casual way. I have to resort to every stratagem to gain my mind. If I don't get these three battlecruisers of 32 knot speed, I shall have to leave the admiralty on January 25th next. By the 28th of December, Churchill would give in and obtain cabinet approval for the construction of two new battlecruisers. The new battlecruisers would take on the names of the two Royal Sovereign class ships, ordered from Fairfields and Palmers. While Palmers did not have a long enough slipway for the ships, their contract would be transferred to the John Brown at Clydebank. Fisher would interview the contractors on the 29th of December and obtain an agreement to an accelerated construction time of 15 months 
from the date the order, which was December 30th. Fisher would continue another campaign for vessels he would describe as large light cruisers, but better described as light battle cruisers, armed with two twin 15-inch gun turrets. The description as light cruisers was really a ploy to get cabinet approval because the construction of further battle cruisers and battleships had been vetoed, but the construction of light cruisers had not. Very sneaky of Fisher. The construction of these so-called light cruisers, Courageous, Glorious, and later Furious, is something we will discuss in a further video. Anyway, the first mention of the requirements for the new battle cruisers is from mid-December when the Director of Naval Construction would receive a request from Fisher of the following characteristics. A long high flared bow, like the pre-dreadnought Renown, but higher, four 15-inch guns in twin mountings as high above the water as in the original dreadnought, an anti-torpedo boat armament of 24-inch guns on the upper deck, mounted high up and with shield protection only. No other guns or torpedoes to be fitted. Speed of 32 knots, oil fuel only, and armor the same scale as HMS Indefatigable. More changes to Fisher's requirements would follow. The first one increasing the main battery, and now a requirement of six guns would be in order, and the addition of two torpedo tubes. During the first week of January, the material on hand at Fairfield and Palmer's for the two battleships that were originally supposed to be built was examined by the DNC's department to see how much could be used for the new ships, and the material was transferred from Palmer's to John Brown. By the middle of the month of January, the builders had enough information to order the additional materials for the ship and would have enough information and supplies to build the hulls as far out as the bilge. And by the 25th of January, 1915, on Fisher's 74th birthday, as it happens, both HMS Renown and Repulse would be laid down. By the end of January, they would have the requirements for the remainder of the hull structure in order the steel required to build it. The DNC would have the drawings, specifications, and calculations normally prepared by the 12th of April, 1915, and it had board approval 10 days later. There would be little changes from the design set forth on the 30th of December, but there would be some changes. Displacement had increased by 500 tons due to modifications of the armor and machinery. More changes would happen, though. The original 4-inch gun battery protected by 3-inch armor would be replaced by upper deck mountings and open shields, and the reduction of the guns from 25 to 17. 15 of the guns would be placed in triple mountings to provide a high volume of fire and ease the problem of distributing the guns of the anti-torpedo boat armament, clear of the blast from the heavy guns and each other. The design for the ships as of April 22, 1915, a displacement of 26,500 tons, machinery to produce 110,000 shaft horsepower with a 32-knot top speed, a main armament of six 15-inch guns with two turrets forward and one aft, 17 4-inch guns, two 3-inch anti-aircraft guns, five maximum machine guns, and two torpedo tubes. The side armor would have 6 inches amidships, 4 inches fore, and 4 and 3 inches aft. The bulkheads would have 4 inches of armor, 4 inches and 3 inches fore, along with 4 and 3 inches aft. The barbettes would have 7 inches of armor. The conning tower would have 10 inches. The 4-inch batteries would still have 3 inches of armor, while the maximum thickness of the main deck would be 2 inches, but the lower deck would have 2.5 inches. Some additional notes. In April of 1915, it was decided that the ships would not be fitted with wood decks in order to economize on weight and construction time. Lagging was fitted under the weather decks and in living spaces to compensate for the loss of insulation and deck strips were fitted to improve the foothold on the steel deck. Cortisine, a type of linoleum decking, would be fitted to the forecastle deck and in the area of the admiral's accommodations. In May of 1915, stiffening to the forward section of the hull, following experience in the Queen Elizabeth battleships, which had shown some weakness in the area. In November of 1915, it was discovered that the revolving weight of the 15-inch mountings had been underestimated by 20 tons, so the additional 60 tons was appropriated by the board margin. With the additional changes, Repulse would weigh 26,850 tons, and Renown would be somewhat larger at 27,420 tons. The ships would be complete in fall of 1916, being constructed very rapidly for ships as large as they are. Repulse would have a 31.7 knot top speed on her trials, and Renown would achieve 32.6 knots. I will close this first part out by discussing a possible origin for Renown and Repulse. It's possibly put down to Fisher's Baltic project, but it's more likely that Repulse and Renown were meant to strengthen the battle cruiser force of the Grand Fleet. While there is more ambiguity with the three large light cruisers, Courageous, Glorious, and Furious, the Baltic project was an old idea of Fisher's, which basically consisted of landing a Russian army on the Baltic coast of Pomerania, 90 miles from Berlin, 
which would directly threaten the capital and need the Germans to redistribute troops, relieving pressure on the Russian front, but ultimately leading to panic and collapse. In the next part, I'll cover the three large light cruisers. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and please remember to like and subscribe.